Well, currently there's a global pandemic going on right now. I, for one, am not a huge pandemic enthusiast, so while everyone is starting to bunker down and buy out cleaners and paper products, I'm stuck in Clay God's basement. Hello everybody, my name is Kamana Kimpa, and I'm waiting on test results on a virus I cannot name unless I want to be striked down by the YouTube algorithm. Upon learning that my lifestyle is referred to as self-quarantine, I decided to fully embrace the term and have bought enough rations to last me until 2022. In order to pass the time, I decided to play all the games on my two playlists, including the new Animal Crossing game, New Horizons. I have never played an Animal Crossing game before, so who better to tell you if the game is good or not than someone with no experience with the series whatsoever. Because this will be my first Animal Crossing game, I don't really know what to expect. I saw the life simulation aspects of the game and thought, life simulation game? Anecdotal evidence tells me this sucks. However, recently I played a bit of Stardew Valley and finally realized that the games like this allow me to fulfill my greatest fantasy, being a homeowner. So, with this in mind, I'm more than eager to start up. Full disclaimer, normally when I do a review, or when I want to review something, I make sure that I play through the entire game. I have not played through all of Animal Crossing, and may not have a full grasp of what all the game has to offer. So, what is Animal Crossing New Horizons? Well, it's quite simple. You, the player, decide to vacation on a deserted island as a part of a package provided by Tom Nook. You can choose one of four islands to vacation on and travel out to the island with some others looking for some time off. After going into debt because you decided to go on to a vacation with no money, you now must work off your newly found debt by helping Tom Nook develop the island, making it more appealing to other vacationers so they would want to stay. One of the biggest things that separates this game from others is its sense of pacing. In a lot of life simulation games, there is a day and night cycle as well as seasons, just like in real life. And while Animal Crossing does have these cycles, the way it implements it into the game is quite different. The most common example I've seen of the day and night cycle is that each day and night is a set number of minutes long, such as 20. After a 20 minute long day and a 20 minute long night, a day has passed. This way, you'll be able to experience a large number of days in a single play session while keeping the more realistic aspects of time-sensitive activities. For example, farming. When you plant something in real life, it takes time for it to grow. Sometimes it could be a week or two, or in the case of a larger fruit tree, it could take years. In a game like Stardew Valley, it takes a few in-game days for your crops to grow, but if you plant your crops at the start of playing and play for about an hour or two, you'll be able to harvest those crops and sell them by the end. While you still have to be patient when it comes to activities like these, it's realistic to assume that the player will be able to start and finish an activity in the span of one play session. Animal Crossing does not follow this type of day and night cycle, and rather connects the Nintendo Switch internal clock to determine the time of day. If your Switch clock says that it's currently 4 in the afternoon, then in-game it will also be 4 in the afternoon. This affects the progression of the game, which I will talk about a little bit later. But because of this, the pacing of the game is very slow. Often it takes real life days to reach a milestone and whatnot. This creates a relaxing atmosphere in the game. There's no hurry to finish the game. Rather, the game puts focus on your current experience instead of progressing to the next story beat or milestone. This makes the game feel more like a mobile game where you check in on the game once a day for an hour or two at most. The pacing of the game is quite unique when it stands amongst its contemporaries and adds to the experience of the game, but can ultimately be a turn off for some people. Why? Because of the game's sense of progression. Once again, it takes real life days to complete certain activities that are essential to progressing. Like a lot of other life simulation games, Animal Crossing doesn't really have a distinct goal. However, it once again differs from similar games due to the soft goals that the players can work towards. For example, Stardew Valley has a community hall that you can work to replenish, but Animal Crossing's goal is to develop your island. What does that mean? Well, that really depends on the player. The community center in Stardew requires you to harvest and gather materials and crops to restore the hall. There are required items that the player has to get, and while this is something that you can ignore and do at your own pace, it is ultimately still a main goal to achieve as it has to do with the people you interact with in the town. Animal Crossing's goal is much more dependent on what the player wants to do. Developing your island can be whatever you want. You can expand your museum, you can invite as many people to your island as possible, or pimp out your island like a car in GTA. 
To be able to progress, you have to upgrade your tools, which allows you to alter your island and gain different resources. You can use these resources to craft DIY goods or sell them to Timmy or later to the shop. You can use the goods to advance your island and use the money to buy different items and upgrade your house. Progression is largely measured by your money and amount of DIY recipes. The more recipes you have, the more you can harvest resources and explore different islands. The more money you have, the more you can buy and upgrade your house. On top of bells, which is the primary currency in the game, there is a secondary currency that you could get called Nook Miles. With Nook Miles, you could buy special goods that can't be bought with bells, like recipes for better tools or plane tickets, which allow you to explore different deserted islands with different resources. You may get milestones through reaching different achievements, such as planting X number of trees or catching Y number of fish. Once you take a loan on your house, you will also be able to gain access to Nook Miles Plus, which give you smaller, temporary achievements that also give you a fair amount of Nook Miles for your troubles. This all sounds fine and dandy, but this makes the game very slow. It often feels like you can't really do much in one game without grinding the game a bunch, and that's kinda true. For me, the first day of the game was not incredibly enjoyable. I was enjoying the lighthearted nature of the game and said, hey, I want to go visit Clay's Island, and the airport that lets you do that said, no, come back tomorrow. A lot of things take real life days to complete, like building a house, building a museum, building a shop. There's a lot of building. It can be frustrating if you want to sit down and just spend the entire day playing the game because after an hour or two, you kind of did everything you can do that day. The problem with playing a game like this for an extended amount of time is you start to realize the game is kind of repetitive. You harvest resources, build something, talk to someone, sell and buy goods, harvest resources, build something, talk to someone, buy and sell goods. It goes on and on. This helps the game feel more fresh if you're playing for at most an hour a day, but can get super stale if you're playing for too long. I think ultimately this real life time thing helps the game contain more replayability, but can alienate some people that just want to sit down and play for hours on end. Now that I've wrapped up talking about the time in the game, I want to talk a little bit more about some of the other mechanics. There are not a lot of mechanics in this game. There is no combat, there is no relationship tree, there are no time skips without exploits. There's not a lot to remember which makes it easy to pick the game up. B is to run, A is to interact, X is for inventory, Y is to pocket. You could catch bugs with a net, catch fish with a fishing rod, dig a holes with a shovel, cut and hit things with an axe. That's it. That's fine for the most part, but sometimes using the different tools can be pretty annoying. For instance, the game works on a grid-based system. You can't see this, but all your actions are affected by this. If I want to dig a hole in front of me, then it will dig a hole in one of the squares in front of me. Because I can't see how the terrain will be affected by my actions, I often found myself digging or fishing in places I did not want to do these things. Maybe a display could be used to show the player how their actions will interact with the environment, but I do understand that this may clash with the visual presentation of the game. The other thing that's annoying is when you pick up something or select an item, your character turns to face the screen. I found this cute in the beginning, then quickly realized it was quite annoying. I would line myself up perfectly to hit a rock or chop down a tree, and remember I forgot to select my tool, then bam, now I'm facing towards the camera like an idiot. It's pretty obnoxious and I wish that the game would just turn your character back in the direction that you were facing before. More complex actions can be taken when in dialogue with other characters like donating to the museum, selling items, or helping develop your island with Tom Nook. The island is connected to your clock and you're able to choose your hemisphere, which means that seasons change. I have not experienced this because I have not used any exploits to get ahead that far, so I'm unsure about the effects that this will have on gameplay, but I can guess that it alters the fish and bugs you can find and maybe the growth of fruit. When you go to visit different deserted islands, there's a chance that there will be a resident on it. While you ransack their island and take everything that they own, you can invite them to come over and move onto your island. I was able to start having people move onto my island after about three days and had three housing kits. I don't know if there's a specified time if you have to get a certain number of people to move onto your island or if it's flexible or whatever, but you can invite people onto your island. You plop these kits down somewhere on your island and fill them and surround them with different furniture so people can move in. Like the other structures outside of the main tent Tom Nook stays in, you can control where different houses and facilities will go, so planning the island is largely up to you. When it comes to houses, specifically your house, you can upgrade it a multitude of times to make the inside bigger as well as increasing the storage. Of course, you can now go into more debt and you now must pay off your mortgage. You can customize your house with different wallpapers and floorings as well as different furniture that you can make at a DIY crafting station. Once you have used your Minecraft crafting table, you can now place different furniture and objects not only around your house but anywhere on the island as well. 
To add to the customizable options, you have a large selection of character traits and clothes that you could choose and purchase to fit your style. With the abundance of possibilities when it comes to character and island creation, I want to move on to my final topic before I wrap this up. Visuals and character. When I say character, I do not mean like the characters in this game. I do not find that they impacted my experience very much, but my neighbors are a koala who talks about his big bulging muscles and a rabbit that likes to call me Cottontail. When I say character, I mean the game. I've mentioned this before, but the game is very lighthearted, and you can see this in the pacing, minimal mechanics, and visual style. Everything is very round and has a soft look to it. The game is quite cute. It's inviting and easy in the eyes, and while playing the game, looking through all the little details that it holds, I would often just wonder, why couldn't Pokemon look like this? I haven't had any performance issues with my frame rate, and thought that everything looked pretty cohesive. The only issue I have with the visuals of the game are the little critters and fossils that you can find across the islands. The bugs, fish, and fossils are incredibly detailed and look great, but standing alongside my chibi-styled character, it looks kind of weird. This isn't a deal breaker or anything, but I couldn't help but find it kind of odd. I wish that maybe they simplified some of the designs for these collectibles, but at the same time, I do understand that then you run the risk of these items looking too similar to one another. But outside of this, there's not really any problems I have with the visuals of the game or the presentation. Me, me, quit, me, oh. Did I find this game enjoyable? Yes! Would I recommend it? Yeah! I think the game is super fun and definitely worth the money, but the pacing of the game is super slow, and that is something that's pretty hard to get into if you don't like that kind of stuff. If you're okay with this type of pacing and just want a cute little game to play and relax, I'd say give it a shot. If you're concerned about the number of hours that you could get out of this game, that's largely up to you. By the time I'm writing this review, I've had the game for about 7 days and probably vlogged upwards of 15 hours or so. I don't really know, because my Nintendo profile only says I've had the game for a week instead of actually giving me a timestamp. Thanks, Nintendo. I also would buy the Switch just for Animal Crossing. I don't often think a lot of games are worth buying an entirely new console for on their own, but if you want to play this game and only this game, I'd say just play Stardew Valley. It runs on most computers made in like the last 5 years and is faster with less furries, but if you really want the furry stuff, you should buy a 3DS and play New Leaf. I haven't played the game myself, but Reggie seems to like it, and that's all I need to know. Okay, that's all the time I've got. I gotta get back to playing Animal Crossing New Leaf on my Nintendo 3DS. So, those were my thoughts on Animal Crossing New Horizon, and it looks like my virus test results have come back. Let's see what they say. Sir, it appears that you have tested positive for the virus. How is this possible? I bond over 300 rolls of toilet paper. Uh, hello. Uh, so, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I spent quite a decent amount of time working on it. Anyway, I just want to put this little message in at the end just to stay safe, stay inside, guys, with the whole pandemic going on. Make sure you wash your hands, right? You want to wash your hands with soap, don't just use hand sanitizer. I don't remember what the exact difference is, but the soap is like, I think it kills the virus, but the hand sanitizer just kind of like neutralizes it. So you want to you wanna use the soap. Uh, I got some other videos uh, in production for uh, down the pipeline. Uh, I want to make a, another video essay again. It's been a very, very long time since so I upload one of those, but that will hopefully come up within the upcoming week. Then afterwards, I'm going to make a video in the style of this for Persona 5 The Royal. That may take a while to come out. The base game was like, what, 100 hours for me to finish, so this is probably going to be a lot more. And I, I'll be trying to like do as much stuff in that game as possible just to make sure I get the full experience. But anyways, once again guys, stay safe and I'll see you guys later.